Hello and welcome back to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be installing Linux Mint and then changing the desktop environment to KDE Plasma. But first, before we proceed any further into the video, I'd like to thank my channel members. These are Mislav and Darius. They get early access to videos such as this one right here, as well as a little badge next to the name for both comments and live streams. And I get prior, they get priority response because I get a notification on my phone. Anyway. Let's get into getting set up installed. So, Linux Mint, download your ISO from your choice, uh, from a choice of locations. You can torrent it if you want to, or you can download it directly from one of the many, many uh, dedicated mirrors for it. Uh, in my case, I just downloaded it from a UK server. Uh, I downloaded it from the University of Kent UK mirror service. Came down pretty quick. There was no hassle at all. So, here we are, we have the usual, what do you want to do? Uh, in this case, we want to install, we would like to be able to install Mint. Uh, it has an interesting looking throbber, that is the name of the thing that goes around in circles. It is, it is indeed called a throbber. You are welcome for that knowledge. Uh, if I had to know about it, now do you. So it's called a throbber, we're not going to be installing any multimedia codecs or anything like that. And we're just going to go install off to the races. Yes, I know. Uh, this is currently hosted on a QEMU KVM virtual machine. Uh, so what you see here is as close as you can get to it actually being bare metal. Well, instead of it being bare metal. So this is the closest, like I said, as close as you can get to bare metal. Now, why would you want to use Linux Mint? Well, Linux Mint is just a variation of Debian, as most things are these days. It's either a variation of Debian, Fedora, or Arch. But in some cases, you'll have different operating systems that are very, take off, uh, take their own thing from somewhere else. But in this case, this is just a variation of Debian. Uh, they like to make themselves as a more user-friendly. It looks a bit more like Windows XP, it looks a bit more like the older versions of window that, Windows that people are used to, and honestly, who doesn't love the older versions of Windows? So it's more of a swings and roundabouts type thing. Uh, with this virtual machine, it has 8 gigs of RAM and 8 cores assigned to it, so it is on a 1 to 1 core to RAM wise, so it should install relatively quickly. Again, the more resources you have available to a operating system when installing the faster it should install again this is subjective to what your system is and how well your system performs under you know, in installations and under regular tasks uh, as we can see here it is currently just going through the process of copying files as well as no writable cache directories yeah fun well that's just the setup stuff it's nearly finished so it does highly, highly depend on your own system and so on and so forth. As we can see here, it's now finally flicking through the uh, what you can do with your operating system. Uh, it's good to know that Spotify is supported everywhere. We would like to thank Spotify for actually providing a software package that works in regards to the operating system. If anything, uh, Spotify is one of the better mass company uh international corporatized companies so yeah i i, I like spotify uh, i know that it works and at the end of the year i get to see what i've listened to throughout the year so it's uh it's definitely an interesting one it's nice to see um so this is just taking a little bit of time again very much does depend on your own system as well as the as well as what you have available to it so we will continue once it actually starts getting somewhere Okay, so we. Oh, it's good to see OBS didn't crash this time. Uh, normally, when I unpause inside of OBS, it just goes and stops. But no, and this time it didn't. That's good. So, as we can see here, it is. We're now actually getting through the process of installing packages and packing. It's now gone through time zone configuration as well as date and time and a few other system configuration stuff. Now, because I haven't specified uh, what I want it installed, because if you saw, I didn't select uh, the install uh, 
co um, software and codecs. I, I didn't select that. So this will be a pretty much bare bones, non-existent system. And for the purpose we want, for installing Plasma, uh, or KDE Plasma, that's good because we don't want to have the issue of potentially having conflicts with software going, oh, I don't know. Um, because on my own, on the host system for this, I have several desktop environments installed. My ears are stuck. I have several desktop environments installed, and as a result, some of I have duplicates of things such as the file manager. I type in files into my start menu, and it gives me GNOME because GNOME goes gets gets stuffed when I don't want GNOME. So yeah, it's. If you pick an operating, if you pick a desktop environment and stick with it, you'll be fine. However, if you want to chop and change between them, go ahead. Just be aware of the consequences of you. You, you could quite easily mess it up. To being entirely honest, I, I, I yeah, I, I'm living with the consequences of my actions. It's oh so fun. Uh, so we're nearly through the installation process. What this is just doing is it's just uh, installing it and then removing what it doesn't need. Uh, as we can see here, it's um, removing languages. Because we've specified we only want English, it is removing language packages that it does not need. So it'll lighten up the system, make it yeah, make the install size less. Uh, I remember the days of having a 250 gig hard drive installing Windows 7 on it and having 190 gigs after the fact. So, yeah, it's nice to know that we finally reached a point where operating systems take up barely no room at all. Real bloody good. Mm -hmm. So, now that we've finished with the installation, it is as easy as that, which is why so many people like using it. Um, we will just quickly eject the media. So, doodly -de 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 -de. Eject, apply, come back, full screen. Yes, sir. Yes, Mintimus. It has been removed. Full screen again. Then we let start letting it go through the process. So, we've got our Mint. The first thing we should realistically do is make sure do not show this dialog up startup i'm glad that option's there uh, we're not going to install anything we're just going to go bye bye and we're going to full screen this because it's not quite there resolution wise so we want 19 20 by 10 18 and a 16 by 9 oh would you look at that that looks so much better uh first things first terminal so we want um sudo hyphen i and then Mint vi sudo, and this is just to add the uh, I've forgotten how to do that. Oh, mint uh, all all equals all all all. Right, just for a, oh, wrong way. So just for a quick test, we want to do sudo apt install neovetch, even though, now would you look at that? I haven't even told it to install neovetch, and neovetch is already installed. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Huh. That is pretty cool. Very nice. Right, so we want to update our system. So it's just for any Debian-based system, it's just sudo apt to update. Um, it, it'll always be apt, regardless of what you're doing, unless you're using um, bottles or flat packs. But the base system is just sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade, um, sudo apt dist hyphen upgrade, and then just whatever you're told to do in various instructions. But the basis and basics are sudo apt upgrade and sudo apt a a update, then upgrade, or if you really fancy, just sudo apt um, upgrade and and sudo apt sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade. Uh, upgrade. 
There you go. Doing both at once. And then add a hyphen Y to it. So it just goes, yes, do it. Without me having to tell you yes. Uh, the one thing that I don't like about this is why were none of the updates installed in the beginning? Like, the system is brand spanking new. Why are there already 195 updates? I know we're talking like megabytes here. Just tiny, no need to worry about it. No, it's, it's, it's annoying. Like, yeah, it's just a minor inconvenience, but it's still an inconvenience nonetheless. Like, we're referencing Windows again here, but I remember the days of you install the system with Windows and then you have to immediately check Windows Update because it might be the computer has to sit there for the next two hours doing nothing whilst it downloads and installs the update and God forbid it has a failed update and you weren't there to, weren't there to babysit it. So you come back after two hours and go, no progress has been made because the update failed. It happens. It's annoying. But that was Windows 7, 8, 8.1, 10, and then also 7 and XP. But it's, yeah, getting through the process. So, please reboot the system when convenient. Ah, yes. When convenient, that's not right now. The convenience is not right now. So, once the system is finished updating, we have to choose uh, a plasma meta package. This is just for... Well, doing this, the apt um, package manager provides a basis for the uh, meta packages. They are virtual ones that don't actually contain any uh, software, um, but they're just a convenient way of pulling things in. That's, that's really all it is. But in our case, what we want to do is we want to get our... We want to get a KDE standard for this one because there's like three meta packages for KDE, but... In this case, we just want to get a KDE standard package. So in this case, it's just clear sudo apt uh, install KDE standard. I will get there eventually. And then whack enter. This is um, grabbing a, a 689 updates and it will only use 1.4, 1 1.5 gigs of RAM. Uh, gigs of ram no 1.5 gigs of storage unless you know you're running your system off of ram then it's going to use 1.5 gigs of storage there are people who are crazy enough to use their systems exclusively on ram i mean oh really why not if you can do it why not that is the fun part your computer do whatever the hell you want with it um uh, so we this is asking us what type of desk, um, desktop manager we want. In this case, we're just going to go with SDDM or Simple Display Desktop Manager. Uh, I've used SDDM quite a lot in the past. It, it just works fantastically. It just works. And that's the main thing you need to worry about. Because if it works, it's fine. So... Once this is done, uh, again, this very much does depend on your system, the what you can do with it, and how well it's actually good at doing things. So, top, as we can see here, it's just, it's using resources, and you know what, that's fine. That's what we wanted. We want it to be using resources. Although, I'm not sure it should... I've not seen that before. I have a habit breaking system, so I wasn't. You know, it's fine. The system's working. It's doing. <laughs> it's doing what we need it to do. It is fine. We will live. Right. So again, we just have to wait for this to go through and finish installing. So we'll return once that's done. Okay. Now that we have our system installed. Well, not the system, but the desktop environment installed. Uh, this is your update manager if you want to use it. Um, it just pops up once you first start doing things. Yes, I know my system's up to date. I've just updated it. Me, me, me. So in this case, we just want to... We could have the choice to update it, but in this case, we're just going to go log out. It recommends you recommended to update, but in this case, I'm just going log out gives us this this is the kd this is the 
this is the it gives you the option of just like the desktop environment i will get there eventually this is your selection it is cinnamon one uh in this case here if we just select that give it a couple seconds bada bing kde it is it, it is quite easily as that and bearing in mind we've gone from no system at all to installed in less than an hour for you it's only 15 minutes for me it's been about an hour maybe a bit less but that's also because i've been sat scrolling on my phone whilst it finished so it doesn't really make it make any difference to me anyway you guys are wonderful and juicy stay safe um if you like the if you liked the video hit the like button if you dislike it dislike they both seem to work even though you can only see one of them remember when you use linux don't panic i have been nick you have been amazing and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day goodbye